Good evening, and welcome to the 2023 Executive MBA, Hybrid MBA, and Technology Management MBA graduation ceremony. Thank you for coming. We are thrilled with the turnout for tonight's event, and we are expecting a full house tonight. If there are empty seats towards the center of your row, please stand up and move towards the center until all empty seats are filled. As a courtesy for all guests, we ask that cell phones be turned off and that no one stand in the aisleways. Professional photographers will be taking pictures of the graduates on stage as they receive their diplomas. If you would like to take your own pictures, please be courteous and remain out of the aisleways. Once the ceremony has concluded, we request that you remain in your seats until all faculty and graduates have left the theater. We are honored to have a trio of very talented local musicians playing for us tonight. We hope you enjoyed the music of Tom Zhekoinski, Virginia Zhekoinski, and Lisa Bergman. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the ceremony.
graduates, faculty, and distinguished guests, please be seated. Thank you. Graduates and guests, welcome. Before we open the ceremony, we would like to acknowledge that the University of Washington resides on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle. The Duwamish people, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. As marshal, I declare these ceremonies open. It's my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the Foster School of Business, Frank Hodge. Well, good evening, everyone. And on behalf of the faculty and special guests on stage and the wonderful staff out amongst us, which are making tonight possible, I welcome you to the 2023 graduation celebration, a celebration celebrating the graduates of the Executive MBA program, the Technology Management MBA program, and the Hybrid MBA program. <clears throat> Graduates, as you celebrate this major accomplishment, I have two requests. The first pertains to what you celebrate. I encourage you that rather than celebrate the piece of paper that you will receive tonight, you celebrate the process that you went through in order to get that piece of paper. Celebrate the choice to go back and get a graduate degree. Celebrate the very first day of classes. Remember how nervous you were? Celebrate those classmates that became close friends. Celebrate all the details in the program up until today. And why you're celebrating the process, be sure and reach out to those that supported you during this journey. Send them a note, high five them, fist bump them, text them, whatever it is, Share your gratitude with them. They'll appreciate it. A student said it best when they told me, an education is something you do, not something you get. I encourage you to celebrate the process because research shows that if you celebrate the process instead of just the outcome, you're more likely to take on significant challenges and achieve them in the future. My second request is to stay in touch. As you leave the student community and become part of the alumni community, you are joining a network of over 15,000 foster MBAs, 60,000 foster graduates, and 500,000 University of Washington graduates. Stay connected in those communities, and eventually lead them. And through those communities, I will stay connected with you, and I look forward to it. Congratulations, graduates. I now have the distinct honor of introducing our keynote speaker, Steve Singh. Steve is the managing director at Madrona Venture Group, specializing in technology-related ventures, and has been recognized as one of the Puget Sound Business Journal power 100 individuals. Steve holds the position of executive chairman of multiple organizations and serves on the board of directors of Clary, Leaf Logistics, and Washington Federal Bank. Closer to home, at least my home, he graciously shares his knowledge and experiences as a member of the Foster School of Business Advisory Board. Steve's leadership, passion, and commitment to excellence continue to shape multiple companies across multiple industries a reflection of his diverse and very deep expertise in guiding others to achieve their goals. Beyond his professional achievements, Steve is dedicated to making a positive impact on our society as chairman of the Singh Family Foundation. Steve is someone who reflects our desire to better humanity through business. Please join me in a warm welcome, Steve Singh. So good evening, everyone. So by the way, to that wonderful family that directed me in the garage, thank you. You got me here this evening. 
Look, I want to, to all the graduates, congratulations to each and every one of you. Now, it should be known that uh, I'm not a college graduate. In fact, I'm not a recipient of any advanced degree. So it's an honor to be standing here on this stage offering a commencement address. It's, it's good to know what it would have felt like to wear a cap and gown and, and uh, experience it. So thank you for that. The fact that you can devote yourself to continuing your education in an effort, presumably, to be better tomorrow than you are today, all while managing a full-time job and getting time with your loved ones, says more about you than I can ever say. Your work ethic, your drive, your imagination, and this little one right here, <laughs> combined with an environment as wonderful as our country, gives me hope that we can solve some of the most challenging problems facing humanity, and frankly, crush the easier ones, like how to build great businesses, create jobs, and create opportunities. I thought I might share a few experiences from my life. I hope they might prove useful to you as you live an amazing, impactful life and as you, frankly, better humanity. So an evening, more than a few decades ago, as I finally reached the first uh, threshold of my adult life, which was really being able to provide for my family, start to build a future for my children, and finding ways to truly be a partner to my incredible wife, I sat and wondered what the meaning of my life was. So at the time, just so you have some context, I was the chairman and CEO of a wonderful company called Concur, that today would be a Fortune 500 company if it was a standalone business. I love the people I work with. I love my family. I had a few very dear friends that I love spending time with. Look, I was on a path to create more wealth than I ever thought possible. More importantly, I was happy every single day. I couldn't wait to get, get started each morning and go about my day. Yet, I had a yearning for something more. Not more wealth, not fame, not accolades. Those things never were, and they're not today. Things that are important to me. Now, don't misunderstand me. I enjoy all those things, but they're not the measure of my life. Back then, I was coming to grips with the fact that in 100 years, no one will know that I existed. I'll be nothing more than a story to my great-grandchildren. In fact, I'll be the equivalent of the grain still photographs that I have of my own grandparents. And, and frankly, I'll be less than that to humanity. Now, that seemed cruel. How could God, or nature, or the force, or whatever you believe in, make our lives that insignificant? So trying to understand the meaning of my life ended up consuming me. Through conversations with friends and an incredible diverse group of people from around the world that, frankly, I didn't know until I approached them, through my own mistakes and through necessity which was a desire to make concur something that would endure beyond my lifetime. I came to realize that the only thing that matters, the measure of life, is how we can improve the trajectory of life for others, but in a sustainable way. That realization provided a framework for how I thought about everything I did. It gave me hope that I could add something meaningful to humanity, that my actions might have a positive ripple effect in time. Now, no one should take what I've just said to mean that I ever, at any time, had everything or even anything figured out. I never did. But the framework to solve for what I yearn for and for building an incredible business were one and the same. If you want to change the trajectory of life for others in a sustainable way, you need to create the world you want. You need to be demanding of people while being an incredible human being. And you need to embrace change. Let me expand upon each of these items. The first is to create the world you want. 
at least in your little corner of the world. Look, outside of nature, everything you see around you was created by those that came before you. The classroom that you're sitting in, the lessons you were taught, the car you drove here in. You have every capacity to shape the world. But the key to creating that world in an enduring model is to remember that it can never be about you. Create the world as it should be, irrespective of what you get out of it, irrespective of how you benefit. Because then you have a shot at something that endures. So as we expand to concur from a fledgling startup to the multi-billion dollar revenue business that it is today, we imagine how corporate travel should work. From how you book travel, to checking into the hotel room, to having the receipt sent automatically to your expense report, frankly, to making the concept of the expense report go away. We painted a vision of an ideal world, at least our little corner of it, and we shared it with our industry. We called it the perfect trip. We committed ourselves to executing against that vision, knowing from the start that we could not do it all by ourselves. We opened up our technology platform and let anyone add value to it. We encouraged our partners and our competitors to improve upon the vision that we laid out. To be fair, it was a scary thing to do. If others could move faster than we could, they would shape and define that perfect trip and then, and frankly, end up leading the market. And that was actually OK. In fact, that was the very magic of creating the world you want. Everyone gets to participate and improve the product or experience. Now, interestingly, not everyone understood that. Some usurped the concept of the perfect trip and said it was only available through them. Frankly, they missed the point. We kept that pushing that vision to be better. Why? Because our customers and our competitors and frankly, our own people understood that it was all about getting better every single day. That it was about succeeding together and allowing room for others to raise the bar even higher. It was about collaboration across the entire ecosystem where the goal kept moving higher so everyone could benefit. The second principle is to be demanding of yourself and of your people while being an incredible human being. Look, contrary to, exactly, uh, contrary to conventional wisdom, the two concepts of being demanding and being an incredible human being are not mutually exclusive. Incredible people come in all shapes and sizes and from all corners of the world. What they share in common is humility, intellectual honesty, an incredible work ethic, and compassion for others. They not only embrace a demanding environment, they're often more demanding of themselves than you could ever be. Now, we often hear stories of the demanding CEO and how everyone in the company bends to their will and vision. That makes for a great movie, but not an enduring success. Yes, you have to be clear on what you want, and you need to set the pace through your own example. But you can't bring out the best of others without letting them be who they are. Enduring success comes as teams, including leaders, mold themselves to each other, allowing everyone to develop their own very best attributes. In my view, this approach leads to diversity of thought and perspectives and allows co the company to truly capture the best from its people. Now, make no mistake, not everyone will rise to the challenge for a number of reasons. But humanity, organizations, teams, it doesn't matter, all advance when everyone is pulling together. And that, frankly, is our commitment to one another. By the way, this year, Concur will celebrate its 30th anniversary. And in that time, it has produced 23 CEOs and counting. Hundreds of people that now serve on executive staffs of other companies. And at least 3,000 millionaires. And for me, more importantly, nearly 12,000 lifelong friends. 
The third principle is to embrace change. Continual innovation, continually, continually pushing yourself outside of what is comfortable is a source of joy and of lifelong learning. And more often than not, it is the only path to enduring success. Concur evolved this business model three times, from shrink wrap software to on-premise software to software as a service. Now that third evolution was particularly challenging as we changed our technology stack, our sales model, our team, and our business model all at the same time. And to make it even more fun, we did it while we were a public company. The reason for that change was simple. We wanted to serve companies of all sizes and in all geographies in a cost-effective model. That desire to change came from imagining the way that our little corner of the world should be. New technology models like software as a service gave us a chance to make that goal a reality. We just had to have the courage to go execute against it. Frankie, in the first two years of that transition, our investors and even members of our team abandoned us. But that was okay, because we knew what the world needed to look like, and we were committed to getting there. Let me share a more personal example of embracing change. You know, in a funny twist of life, a few years after I left SAP, which was the company that acquired Concur, my son started a company. He wanted to reimagine what expense management should be. Look, I'm privileged to be an investor in his company and serve as the chairman of the company. Now, I feel like I might know a little bit about this market, but each day, I have to let go of my historical leanings, learnings and reimagine how to think about the market and what's needed to serve it. Each day, Naveen teaches me something new. I, I saw expense management as one giant market. He sees it as 40 submarkets. I saw it as a packaged application. He sees it as a packaged application, but also a developer services market. And frankly, the list goes on. Opportunities evolve with new technologies, new people, and new value propositions. Before starting Center, by the way, Naveen was an intern at Concur. So Concur's competition is coming from one of its own. What I often ask myself is, will the culture of embracing change that I worked hard to build at Concur be strong enough to compete with new thinking? We'll see. The embrace of change, of constantly pushing yourself to look at problems and opportunities in the light of what's possible today creates and maintains an innovator's mindset and allows you to lead for decades. It also keeps you very young. Let me close with this. Your actions are the ripple effect in time. They will transcend your lifetime and hopefully move humanity closer to its potential. At the very minimum, You'll be more than the grain photograph to your great-grandchildren, and you'll be the example that they build upon. Look, you're the foundation of all those that will come after us, so live an impactful life. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you, Steve, for those optimistic, engaging, and inspiring remarks about uh, not just our ability, but our responsibility as leaders to positively impact others around us. I hear you don't have a degree. See me after the ceremony. <laughs> I know people. It's now my pleasure to introduce Francisco Alberto Perez, who will speak on behalf of the hybrid MBA community and present the faculty teaching award to the faculty members selected by the class. Dear Executive, Hybrid, and Technology Management MBA graduates, congratulations. I'm so proud to be a part of the Foster community with all of you. When I heard that I was the Hybrid MBA class valedictorian, at first I was surprised 
Then I was excited, but then I realized I'd have to write this speech. Um, you see, like, crafting Excel spreadsheet pro formas, coding classification regression trees, those are among my strengths. Choosing the words to express how transformative the MBA Foster experience has been for me, that process is a struggle. And to do it in five minutes is really hard. So, but many of you are probably thinking, there's an obvious, straightforward solution to this. And yes, I'm going to go there, and there's going to be a reason for it. Artificial intelligence and chat GPT. <laughs> Seriously, I was so relieved to think that I had that in my back pocket to get over this anxiety of what to say. I'd have a graduation speech written in literally less than 30 seconds. <laughs> so chat GPT and I, we worked back and forth, because we're collaborative, you know, to create a valedictorian speech. And it was absolutely impressive, like blew me away. We incorporated references to macarons, the meringue-based sandwich cookies, which will forever hold a special meaning for our class. And here's an example. The crispy outer shells sandwiching their creamy interior filling as an analogy for the layers of incredible support we've received from our friends, family, and partners. And I mean that. Thank you. That part felt right about the thinking, the friends, and the family, and the partners, but the rest of it did not feel right. So I kept working. I even took a course on generative AI prompt engineering. Have you all heard of that? I had no idea, but it's a way to get the model to work better for what you want. So I was learning to speak in its language. So the 30 seconds I initially budgeted to write this speech literally turned into many, many hours over many days. The reason we struggled was the speech we programmed together, because it was a program, never felt like my authentic voice. And that's the point. The core of my Foster MBA student journey has been exactly about finding my authentic voice and the confidence to use it to make meaningful changes at my organization and in my community as a physician leader. This is my authentic voice. Readings and personal reflections on leadership were important, but the inspiration and support from my amazing hybrid MBA classmates, C5, and the guidance from our caring faculty, this fostering community that all you created is what transformed me. And this is what business school is all about for me. Learning how to create this culture of collaboration and empowerment so others can reach their full potential. I'm grateful to have been part of an exceptional core hybrid MBA team over the last two years. Team Catalyst, where are you? I can't see you out there. It's so bright up here. <laughs> team members Ken, Lindsay, Lucy, Stephanie, and Thomas. Together we leverage our strengths supported one another through some overwhelming times and learned how to create this false fostering culture. I'm also deeply thankful for inspiring C5 classmates and their exceptional teams who helped transform us. I was so proud to see our capstone finalist teams present brilliant, compelling solutions at our capstone finalist uh, last week competition. Team Seaport threaded in the Philadelphia Eagles, thank you, congratulations. And to Featherlight Cycles, aka Team Caffeines, you absolutely crushed us in the marketplace simulation. Good job. And you helped teach us what we could do better next time to excel in such a competitive business environment. We also had the distinct honor of learning alongside and from military veterans who enriched our class with their valuable experiences. Thank you for your service. C5, as we tried to balance the demands of work, sustain meaningful relationships, and fulfill the responsibilities of our families, we shared the goal of personal growth through the power of education. And during this journey, we celebrated each other, whether it's promotions, career pivots, welcoming new children, and I'm genuinely so glad they're here. To hear their voices is propelling me through this speech, so thank you for bringing them. We've had a lot of other monumental life changes, and we, we celebrated that. When faced with life challenges, we supported one another, demonstrating that the deep connections of our cohort transcended the virtual screen of our weekly meetings. I was so excited to be, I'm so excited to be arriving at graduation here with all of you today. The MBA we receive in this evening is more than a degree. I really feel that it's a privilege that comes with responsibility, a responsibility to make positive impact as ethical leaders. I've witnessed your leadership, your innovation, your commitment, and I'm certain you all will succeed. 
Let's continue to inspire confidence in one another, use our leadership to share our foster culture, and help others find and use their authentic voices. Thank you. The hybrid MBA class recognizes two professors for the Excellence in Teaching Awards, one from our elective course and one from our core course. I'm honored to recognize these faculty tonight on behalf of the C5 class. They've transformed the way we tackle complex problems and equipped us with tools and skills to foster meaningful change. The Excellence in Teaching Award recipient for our elective courses has empowered us with the gift of successful negotiations. Elizabeth Umfress, thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth was unable to join us today, but we celebrated her at our graduation dinner uh, on Saturday. So when selecting the Excellence in Teaching Award for, my, for my, some of the comments they said for my C5 classmates, they described you and your course as follows. You made a potentially intimidating and overwhelming skill into something that was approachable. Your weekly hands-on assignments were like a negotiations laboratory. I felt myself improving with each week. You taught us meaningful and memorable negotiation tools that have already brought real benefits. Your class has done wonders for my confidence. On behalf of the Harvard MBA C5 class, thank you, Elizabeth, and congratulations. The Excellence in Teaching Award recipient for our core courses has profoundly transformed the way we understand and analyze the world with the gift of thinking like an economist. Thank you, Alexis Leon. When selecting the Excellence in Teaching Award, my C5 classmates described you as going above and beyond for his students. You create a learning environment that is accessible for everyone. You care deeply, not only about teaching, but also for students. You are the heartbeat of the program. Congratulations, Alexis. We appreciate you. Thank you. Now, my pleasure to introduce Stephen von Kriegenberg. Thank you. Who will speak on behalf of the Executive MBA monthly cohort and present the faculty teaching award to the faculty members selected by the class. Uh, esteemed faculty, distinguished guests, family and friends, and graduates. Uh, I want to start, because I think it's incredibly important, Francisco said it a second ago, for the graduates to turn around, take a look at, the, at this theater. Look at the people behind you right now and all the people that have supported you to get here. We don't do this alone. We would not be here were it not for the family that is here to support us today, so thank you very much. Uh, for those that know me, I am not one for putting together speech notes before I come up to give a speech. <laughs> uh, I've spent the last couple weeks with all my classmates asking me, are you ready to go, are you ready to go? I said, I, I, down the stairs, I'll figure it out as I come down the stairs. Uh, but I actually stand up here in awe in this moment, uh, that I'm up here on the stage with all the faculty looking out at you. Um, and trying to figure out how I got here. Um, many, many years ago, I was not the best student. Not so many years ago, I never would have attempted uh, to think or even think about attempting a graduate degree, an MBA degree of any kind. And yet here I am, looking out at all of you, looking at my classmates, the way I would have done every day when we met once a month, coming together to study and learn. Engineers, doctors, financial experts, entrepreneurs, marketing experts, uh, decorated military veterans, each and every one of you incredibly inspirational to me. 
I cannot express in words the profound impact you have all had on me uh, over these years. I am genuinely going to miss this. I'm going to enjoy the free time that's going to come back to me now, but I'm genuinely going to miss this experience. Last night at dinner, um, I was uh, very uh, generously volunteered to give a speech <laughs> that I was also not prepared for. Um, but I did, uh, I, I did say some things that I think um, are very important enough to say again, uh, at least for me to you. Um, thank you for allowing me to, be, to come on this journey with you. Uh, thank you for making this one of the best experiences of my life. Congratulations to the MBA tw Monthly 24 graduates. Congratulations to the entire class of 2023. Thank you. Uh, I also have the honor of presenting the Excellence in Teaching Award. Um, so the professor we chose, we've had uh, the very um, huge benefit and honor to have experienced this person from the very beginning. Uh, from week one, uh, asking questions of the old man in the deserts to the very, very last lecture, uh, this professor had an incredibly positive impact on all of us. Uh, even at the end of a four-day session at 4 p.m., leaving a classroom, you left this class after his class thinking, I have made positive steps uh, in becoming a better leader, a more authentic leader. Never once did you leave with anything less than anything positive. Uh, and so we chose to elect Pat Betton as our uh, recipient. <laughs> Pat Betton uh, is not here with us tonight because he's off doing exactly what he does best, which is creating better leaders. Uh, but please join me one more time in giving a round of applause for Pat Betton. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Ken Suru, who will speak on behalf of the Executive MBA Weekly Class 39 and present the Faculty Teaching Award to the faculty members selected by the class. <laughs> Weekly 39, are you ready to rock? I can't hear you. Heck yeah. <laughs> we are definitely the loudest EMBA class in UW history. <laughs> Congratulations, Weekly 39, for making it to the end. It was definitely an intense two-year ride, and it took immense focus and determination to get here. I'm sure you all had great support with you as well, so I'd like to first start off with some acknowledgments. I'd like to thank Boeing and my managers and mentors there for providing me the time and commitment and support to enroll in the program. It's been a worthwhile experience and I plan to pay it back through my leadership in the office. I'd like to thank the EMBA administrative staff for pu putting together such an incredible program, making sure it ran so smoothly, and make, making sure everyone had a memorable and positive experience. Very special thanks to the professors and the TAs for your patience, outstanding teaching, sharing your knowledge and wisdom, and, make, um, and keeping the class engaged. And I've heard the rumors that you all share with each other about us being a little wild and rambunctious <laughs> um, and a little difficult to tame, especially after the breaks. Thank you to all the cohorts. It's been a blast spending the last two years with you, both in class and outside of class. The camarader com camaraderie friendships established over the short time will extend and last a lifetime. We gotta keep the WhatsApp communications going. I'd like to do a shout out to my family and friends who are here today and also watching the live stream, the Hayes, the Campbells, 
the winds, fams, John and Mike, and Sirus. Thanks for being so supportive during my journey and keeping things fun during challenging times. Glad to be part of this wonderful, loving family. I'd like to thank my mother and my mother-in-law for believing in me. You two have always supported my education and deeply cared for me. This EMBA degree is also shared with you and our extended family. I love you, Mama, Maya, and thanks for coming tonight. Lastly, I'd like to thank my lovely and beautiful wife, Anna, who has been my number one fan. She's been with me through the highs and lows and really supported me through this two-year rigorous program. You also motivated and inspired me to get this degree. I couldn't have done it without you, baby. I love you. <laughs> so I, I'm not the only one having a strong support system. I think none of us would be here without the support of our family, friends, and each other. Let's give a big round of applause to all our family and friends who support, support us along the way. Okay, um, let's now reflect on the journey. Many of us started off at Jumpstart, where we came, first came to campus. We heard uh, Dean Hodd speak, and we met our first year learning teams. We also got to know each other a little bit, and I was immediately impressed with the caliber of students in this program, including Kowser, who is a, a, pharma, a, a, leader in the a leader in the pharmaceutical industry, who I had the privilege to introduce. Little did I know that later she becomes our chief networking officer. <laughs> then we went to beautiful Sankadia to get started on some of our classes, play the desert game, where we had the chance to talk to the old man and had the opportunity to show off our skills with the Who Are We presentations. The skits, videos, humor, uh, uh, creativity just was through the roof especially impressed with Victor and his superhero antics and really getting into his characters. When the first year got underway, we learned about the diversity of our professors and their unique teaching styles. For example, getting grilled by Professor Hill on strategy to helping Professor Bergstrom off the floor as he pretended to get hit by a car on the Ave. <laughs> we also learned the key answer to all MBA questions. Got it. It depends. <laughs> the summer international uh, immersion was an extraordinary experience where the class had the opportunity to travel to Barcelona and Prague. We had a chance to visit several companies, enjoy fantastic food and drinks, lots of sightseeing, and really experience the culture. We again were, we again were told we were too loud in many of the establishments. But we did have a chance to go crazy at the soccer game and at the clubs like Harley's. And Mandeep, you weren't supposed to be recording us that night. <laughs> the, the second year, we all switched teams and we, were, we gained more interest in inflation, unemployment, GDP, calculating WAC, and evaluating companies. We also became super competitive. We all wanted to win in Markstrat and the little field simulations. Orange team, do you remember the four-hour meetings we had figuring out what to put in for Bodites and the Sonite markets? I'm sure we weren't the only ones. This last quarter has been a blur, and the workload did not ease up all the way to the end. Learning about the power of AI, foreign exchange markets, ethics, and constructing a business plan. These are all skills we can take as, as we move forward as professionals. Also, this last quarter, the, co the cohort team has put together some amazing networking uh, events like bowling, karaoke, and the pre-graduation party. And at the barbecue event at Robin's place, uh, we had a chance to reflect as well. And a comment Robin made about time really resonated with me. I think the biggest takeaway from my experience here over the last two years is how to balance and manage your time. 
We all had a choice to make each and every day. How much time to spend at work? How much time to spend on homework? How much time to spend with your family? How many, how many, how many hours you can uh, to put into your, your hobbies, uh, interests, and just having fun? We all had a finite number of hours during the day. And trying to fit everything in was just like a Tetris puzzle. We were trying to cram as many blocks uh, in, into a given day. But now we're graduating. The piece of schoolwork opens up now. And we're now masters of time management. <laughs> so what will you do? Spend more time with your loved ones? Focus on your career? Or launch that business opportunity? I think we all, has grown, grow, I think we all have, have grown as leaders during this EMBA journey. And I'm sure you'll be making the right decisions and crushing it as you move forward in life. The other key takeaway is the relationships that were formed in this journey. All of you are rock stars in your fields and amazing people as well. And I look forward to continuing to stay connected with all of you. Thanks again to the UW faculty, the Silver Roundtable, Orange Crush, Bright Green Bins, my family, my fellow friends, cohorts, we're making the EMBA journey a spectacular one. Congratulations. Good luck to you all. Stay loud, everyone. So uh, we have another award to present here today. <laughs> um, on behalf of the Weekly 39 team, or class, I'm pleased to present this year's Excellence in Teaching Award to Professor John Karpoff. Oh, I'll say. Um, so many of us uh, in class. Oh, oh you did? <laughs> so many of us in class do not have a finance background, and you made a complex subject of financial management easy to understand, fun, and engaging. And the class saw a lot of value in, in the course. The, the stories were interesting, like the plain hardware case, and all the, the applications were very practical. Um, the class definitely appreciated your humbleness, uh, empathy, um, your passion, and excellent approach to teaching. The class definitely bonded with you, Professor. <laughs> um, please join me in congratulating Professor John Karpoff for winning the 2023 <laughs> Excellence in Teaching Award. Now my pleasure to introduce Katie Earls, who will speak on behalf of Technology Management MBA Class 22's community and present the Faculty Teaching Award to the faculty members selected by the class. Good evening, distinguished guests family, friends, esteemed faculty, and administration. My name is Catherine Earls, and I go by Katie, and it is my pleasure to present the Excellence in Teaching Award as voted upon by our C22 TMMBA cohort. This professor not only made incredibly complex concepts seem clear and straightforward, her professionalism and tone always held the class focused, present, and engaged. I think it is no mistake that we had this class early in the program setting a solid foundation as well as great anticipation of the quality of the faculty that would teach us during this program. Please give a round of applause for our 2022 quarter one accounting professor, Don Matsumoto.
We are a unique class and had to be a little bit different than most of the speakers that you heard today. I am not the valid Victorian, so before I take us on an emotional journey as we look back on our TMMBA shared story, I would like to ask everyone to please join me in giving a round of applause to our valid Victorian, Lucia Liu. It is an honor to have your trust and the responsibility to share our collective memories of this day. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to our family and friends for their unwavering love and support, especially to my husband who has been there through the late nights, the stress, and the anxiety. I love you. Without you all, we wouldn't be here today. The path that led me to this moment has been filled with countless challenges and unexpected turns. As an immigrant, I own an immeasurable debt of gratitude to my mother, who fought tirelessly to give us the opportunity for a brighter future. It's incredible to reflect on the fact that there was a time when pursuing any kind of degree, let alone an MBA, seemed like an impossible dream. After dedicating eight years of my life to the military, I left the service in 2018, which marked the beginning of a profoundly transformative journey, one that involved a great deal of soul searching and self-discovery. The transition was a struggle. It was a period filled with uncertainty and doubt and an overwhelming sense of confusion. I held off on pursuing any masters until I was ready to be uncomfortable again and found that many of my classmates shared similar stories of exploration and self-discovery. The decision to pursue an MBA, once unimaginable, became a beacon of hope, representing a path toward personal and professional fulfillment. The week of welcome served as a reality check preparing us all for the transformative 18 months that lay ahead. We quickly learned the importance of prioritization, optimization, and collaboration. Some teams became the masters of staying ahead of schedule, while others perfected the art of submitting assignments with a minute or less to spare. You know who you are. Regardless of the approach, every experience served as an opportunity for us to deepen our understanding of our leadership styles. Our cohort will forever be remembered for the vibrant and animated discussions that became our trademark. Recognizing our eagerness to learn and tendency to ask numerous questions, Erin wisely prepared professors in advance. She described us as a unique and inquisitive group who occasionally let the class to stay a little extra longer than we all wanted to. We are an unruly bunch a force to be reckoned with, but we embraced our spirited nature without hesitation. We fearlessly took chances, raising our hands to ask questions, answering cold calls, and seeking advice. Our combined curiosity, bravery, and openness to growth shaped our experience. Over the past 18 months, we have faced countless challenges that tested our collective resilience. In moments of loss, we stood united, offering solace and strength to those who mourned. The remarkable level of attentiveness and support we received from each other early on showcased the genuine care and compassion of the individuals in our cohort. Through personal and professional changes, we unwaveringly supported one another. Our tight-knit community celebrated the arrival of eight precious babies, rejoiced in the union of six weddings and several engagements marking significant milestones that forever interwined our lives. Within our intricate journey, we experienced a tapestry of both daunting and awe-inspiring moments, each leaving an enduring imprint on our shared story. In our Enhancing Leadership Effectiveness class, Professor Benton offered some words of wisdom that I would like to remind us all of. He said, every word we use, every decision we make, and every action we take, people will judge us. They are judging us to a higher standard. They want us to be remarkable, to be extraordinary. Each of us is an inspiration to someone, and we must remember that. We each made the choice to carve out 18 months of our time to learn to be better. We are remarkable. We are the positive change our companies, our industries, our countries, and our world needs. This shared experience has been a privilege a pleasure, and a timeless moment that will forever bind us together as we embark on new beginnings. Let's carry the, the memories, the lessons, and bonds that we forged. 
May our shared experiences continue to inspire us to reach new heights and leave a lasting mark on the world. To the class of 2023, thank you for entrusting me with this honor. Together, TMMBA, we shall shine brightly as we venture forth forever united in purpose, in compassion, and an unyielding pursuit of excellence. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Jody Farwell, director of the Foster School of Business Hybrid MBA program. The Hybrid MBA program would like to recognize the individuals graduating with honors who represent the top 10% of their class. Hybrid MBA students, please stand, remain standing when your name is called in alphabetical order. Nilesh Dixit. Ellie Henningsgaard. Lucy Horn. Timothy Meldahl. Stephanie Pillon. Cody Rogers, Emma Willoughby, and Lauren Woodside Allegra. Please be seated. Hybrid MBA students, please rise, come forward to be recognized. <laughs> Rashmi Krishnamurti. Catherine Fornaray. Harshada Deshpande. Ambalika Katuch. Yash Takur. <laughs> Kastub Surti. <laughs> B.A. Mo. Cody Rogers. <laughs> Timothy Meldahl. <laughs> Scott Harris. Andrew Garber. <laughs> Shamnath Paul. <laughs> Dominique Davidson. Melinda Hathaway. <laughs> Nash Gobbitz. <laughs> Gu
Kritika Arumore. Emma Willoughby. Emily Ibarra. Chris Beatty. Thomas Hunt. Ken Hansen. Lindsay Flangus. Stephanie Pillen. Francisco Perez. Lucy Horn. Katie Williams. Gregory Zona. Ellie Henningsgaard. Rebecca Camarda. Lauren Woodside Allegra. Jason Chang. Anthony Ao. Andrew Brunig. <laughs> Craig Carboni. Jason Brown. Christopher Fromm. <laughs> Colton Duckin. <laughs> Yihan Lu. Devin Botier. Akshaya Pragadishram. Pratichi Dash. Jivy Madan.
Samira Kakari. <laughs> Stephanie Antonetti. <laughs> Rebecca Thornton. Fortune Rodriguez. <laughs> Bonnie Thompson Kirk. <laughs> Nicole Banks. Emily Tucker. <laughs> Kalisha Hubler. <laughs> Dakota Meadows. Tia Smith. Joy Mariner. Ben Nyamura. Jesse Chase. Jack Zhao. Ann Kurtzen. Doug Simon. Chandana Krishna. Joel Day. Jeff Martino. <laughs> Yosti Alagak Storms. <laughs> Emily Shara Barger. Adam Alonza guy. <laughs> Faith Prakash Mishra. Christy Whipple. Yeah. Milim Miriam Kim. Yeah. I have to. Thank you so much. From day one, it's all you. Harlan Miller. Andrew Mendoza.
Steve Pritikakis. Joseph Shu. Drew Nichols. Justin Rowan. Shrieker Srinivasan. Malvis Tarney. Zachary King. Adam Brunig again. Please be seated. I'm pleased to introduce Luis Kapuska, Director of the Executive MBA Program. The Executive MBA Program would like to recognize the individuals in the monthly 24 class graduating with honors and who represent the top 10% of their class. Executive MBA students, please stand and remain standing when your name is called in alphabetical order. Brittany Audette. <laughs> Allison Headley. Stephen Von Kriegenberg. Be seated. Executive MBA monthly 24 cohort students, please rise and come forward to be recognized. Stephen Von Kriegenberg. <laughs> Jesse Rodriguez. <laughs> Muhan Young. Sonia Alvarado. Amrit Nagra. <laughs> Raminder Singh Chada. Brittany Audette. <laughs> Allison K. Headley. <laughs> Katerina Bogdanova.
Kathleen Crail. Lauren Tomala. Joshua Brandon. Peter Thomas. Sally Way. Shauna Jean Marie Livingston. Edith Gomez. Natalia Howe. Matt Riggs. <laughs> Nick Jeswaldo. Yasmin Chambers. Samuel Winstead. Sinkar Babu Kirabandithi. The Executive MBA program would like to recognize the individuals in the weekly 39 class who are graduating with honors and who represent the top 10% of their class. Weekly 39 students, please stand and remain standing when your name is called in alphabetical order. Karen Jane. Michi Tusana Kadafuchi. Matthew Marr. Ken Soho. Adam Vraves. Be seated. And now for the quiet class. Weekly 39 students, please rise and come forward to be recognized. Ken Suru. Victor Mesa. Matthew Marr. Is it too hot in here for you? 
Matthew Thurber. Alan Voller. Nick Leharsagi. Nancy Yoon. Dr. Kunal Joshi. Oh. <laughs> Shweta Kala. Robin Fuse. Greg Southern. Josh McDonald. Todd Cutter. Michi Susana Katafuchi. <laughs> Jay Park. Jarna Kalash Navin Modi. <laughs> Pyle Agrawal. <laughs> Lindsay Todd Merkel. <laughs> Adam Sagala <laughs> Hazel Catherine Acuna Resurrection Cobb Melissa Scoble. <laughs> Alex Chong. <laughs> Raul Rivera. Karen Jane. Perfect. I know. No, I gotta do that. Shannon Gee.
Telka Karen Poras. <laughs> Hannah Hadley Brown. Haley Williams. <laughs> Susan Kim Lee. Laney Sipiora. <laughs> Deepti Shantaram. <laughs> Diane Small. Kowser Hussein. <laughs> Alex Garcia Mendoza. <laughs> Brian Clark. Adam Braves. Aman Verma. Thank you. You bet. Ashish Jane. Frederick Bosco. Mandeep Singh Rathor. Anan Chelepa Kone. Karunya Naburduri. <laughs> Heather Linker. Gaia three, Devi Sukumar. <laughs> Namita Rai Gandhi. I'm pleased to introduce Aaron Duran, Director of the Technology Management MBA Program.
the Technology Management MBA program would like to recognize the individuals who are graduating with honors and who represent the top 10% of their class. Technology Management MBA, please stand and remain standing while your name is called in alphabetical order. Jing Tuing Jia. Wamzi Kulori. Lucia Liu. Evelyn Mukweda. Sorry, Mukwedia. Kriti Pandit. Please be seated. TMMBA students, please rise and come forward to be recognized. Kimberly R. Cordes Metzler. Pavna Chauhan. Anusha Vardarajan. Alexander Noble. Connor Smith. Richa Chug. Andrew Jacobson. Alberto Barreda. Mario Jose Ricard Suribas. Leopoldo Virial Gonzalez. <laughs> Becky Kennedy. <laughs> Kyle Steele Cooperis. Vidya Dhur Jadal. <laughs> Wang Ye. Jing Chi Jie.
Nelson Mandela Billing. Harrison McDonough. Benjamin W. Borden. <laughs> Jess LaForest. <laughs> Edgar Carino. Karen Tran. <laughs> Jin John. <laughs> Benjamin Cotter. Pratik Tiwari. <laughs> Jennifer Xu Ting Li. <laughs> Pavya Gupta. Kumar Sudarta <laughs> Jonathan Rechtenwald <laughs> Sarah Chimbanga Tom Lee. <laughs> Tomas Osinde. <laughs> Jesse Villa. Russell Kilgannon. Aaron Thomas McKay. Sarah Tay. Robert Bond. John V. Katikitila. Wamzi Kulori. Hannah Way Thornton Rose. <laughs> Jen Doan.
Evelyn Mukwedia. Jigish Parak <laughs> Connor Vehe of Savior. Of Sepian. Sorry, Connor. <laughs> Abigail Elizabeth Stites. <laughs> Karima Nag Paul. Kriti Bandit. <laughs> Anastasia Nebir Castaneda. Yevgeny Yevgeny Yerofiv <laughs> Catherine Angelica Earls Again, our valedictorian, Lucia Liu. And now I turn it over to Frank. Before we end this ceremony, I want to revisit something I said earlier, and that is it truly takes a village in order to support an individual getting an MBA. The degree has your name on it. You alone did not complete the process. So as I said, please celebrate the process, not just the degree, and do it with family and friends. We are approaching the end of the 2023 commencement ceremony. Thank you all for coming. Drive safely and good night. As Marshal, I declare these ceremonies concluded. Family and friends, please remain seated until the faculty and graduates have left the auditorium and join us in celebrating the Class of 2023 Foster School of Business MBA graduates. Yeah.